Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Physics 30, Atomic Physics, Lesson 5, The Mass Defect. Now, when scientists started breaking nuclei apart, they noticed a problem. When you took two, pro two protons and two neutrons and weighed them, they were heavier than when you put them together to form the alpha particle, or the 4,2 helium ion. Notice I said ion, there's no electrons involved, but even then, uh, the ma there's a difference in mass. Now, where does this extra mass, this mass defect, come from? Well, the mass of a nucleus is always less than the mass of all the separate nucleons, protons and neutrons. So if we take our four protons, they can combine them to form a helium ion, we have energy left over. Energy. This difference in mass is called the mass defect. Extra mass is energy. This goes back to Einstein's E equals mc squared. Technically, change in energy equals change in mass times the speed of light squared. This is the binding energy where m is the mass defect. Okay? Now, next page, come on. In nuclear reactions, mass is converted to energy or energy is converted to mass. That's something new for us. Now, this is physics principles number seven, conservation of mass energy on your formula sheet. You will be asked about that. So, let's do a typical question. Chlorine-35 has a mass of 34.9689 atomic mass units. Determine the mass defect of this isotope. Now, note, to do these calculations, there's two units involved. There's atomic mass units, or 1U, as I explained earlier, is 1.660. Uh, 539 times 10 to the minus 27 of a kilogram. Now, that's not the 1.66 on your formula sheet. For these calculations, you need a more exact value of u. And that was given to you a couple of lessons back. Anyway, now, in the same tone, we can also talk about kilograms. So we have to talk about the mass of protons and neutrons uh, with more significant digits. So for these calculations, we'll deal mass of a proton is 1.6726 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. And the mass of a neutrino is 1.6749 times 10 to the minus 27 of a kilogram. Notice they're slightly different when you get to the third decimal place. Roughly the mass of a proton, uh, sorry, proton plus an electron is roughly the mass of a neutron, but that's another story. So going on, or going back to the question, Chlorine-35. Now, you go to your formula sheet, which has the periodic table on it, on the second page, and here's where we need the periodic table. Actually, I'm pointing to my t-shirt, uh, uh, periodic table t-shirt, but of course you can't see it on this video. So, Chlorine-35 is Chlorine-17. All right, so that is 30... There it is again. So, that's 3517 Chlorine. So that's protons, and that's protons plus neutrons. So, now here, for the moment, let's leave everything as atomic mass units because I think that's a little easier. We have 17 protons. That's 17 times um, Oh, sorry, I'm trying, I'm sorry. I should tell you what I'm doing rather than just doing it silently in my head. Oh, dear. I hate this getting old. Just realized that 17... Sorry. As I was saying, we can do kilograms or atomic mass units. I'm going to convert everything to atomic mass units for the moment. So this is 17 times 1.6726 times 10 to the minus 27 of a kilogram. So that is 17 times... 1.67 exponent 2.89839 times 10 minus 26 of a kilogram. Okay. And how many proton how many neutrons do we have? Well, 35 minus 17 is 18 neutrons. That's 18 times 1.6749 times 10 to the minus 27 of a kilogram. Three. 
3.0148 times 10 to the minus 26 of a kilogram. Add that together. We are getting, come on, for a total of 5.8 four times 10 to the minus 26 of a kilogram. Yes, I'm rounding it off. Don't round it off on your calculator. Now, so what's the total mass? Okay, oh, sorry. This is theory. Okay. Now notice I did this in kilograms and I'm talking mass of 34.9689. This is actual. All right, so I've got kilograms and I've got atomic mass units. This sucks, so I should convert one to the other. All right, I'll convert this to kilograms and we'll see the difference in, actually no. Atomic mass unit is a much nicer unit to use for uh, atoms and ions. So 5.854 times 10 to the minus 26 of a kilogram times one U is 1.660, 539, times 10 to the minus 27 of a kilogram, divided by 35.2525 atomic mass units is in theory. In actual, it is 34.9689. 34.969 units. What's the difference? 0.312 units, I believe. So this is the missing mass, or the mass defect. Now, notice I went backwards and forwards from kilograms to atomic mass units. I'll do that. Now, I'll do a couple more examples later, and one I'll do all atomic mass units, and one I'll do all kilograms. Anyway, get the idea of what's going on here. Now. I want to stress something here. Radioactive atoms are unstable because of their size and will decay into different elements, into a different element that's called transmutation. Usually this occurs when atoms have too many neutrons. Now work is required to move a nucleon from a stable nucleus because of the strong nuclear force. Right? The binding energy of a nucleus is the energy required to separate all of its nucleons and move them infinitely far apart. So we have to wor put work or energy in to break up this binding energy. Now, the stability is the binding energy divided by the number of nucleons. So this is a, a nice way, and actually an accurate way, to see how stable various nuclei are. On your notes here, not the clearest picture, but binding energy per nucleon here versus the mass number. And you'll see we have stability the highest part is right up around here, iron. So, the maximum binding energy per nucleon is between a, a mass number 50 and 74, the most stable. So right here. Actually, my circle should be a little bit more this way. Like that. That's the most stable. Okay? And so anything less than that is less stable. And that works out to be 8.8. Uh, mega electron volts per nucleon so that's stable that's the most state most stability or that's how much energy you have to put in to separate each nucleon as you look at this you realize hydrogen 2 hydrogen 3 lithium 6 yes they're much less stable and you look over on the far right you got uranium 238 that's less stable also okay now in your uh, folder, there's a separate handout called Binding Energy of Carbon-12. So just looking at this, 
very briefly and very nicely explains this lesson. Look at the mass of the atom. So mass of carbon-12 is 12 units. Now, sometimes we count the electrons, but if you realize the for six electrons, it's 0.0033 atomic mass units. It's small enough we can usually ignore it. So you calculate the mass of the carbon-12 nucleus. You get the difference in mass, the mass defect. So that mass defect, you turn into energy, E equals mc squared. You get in mass, missing is 1.643 times 10 to the minus 28 kilograms. And then energy is 92.16 mega electron volts. Since there's 12 nucleons, that's minus 7.7 .7 mega electron volts per nucleus. Now that's a binding energy. So that's how much energy you've got to put in to break up carbon-12. Right? Now, the back page of this is atomic mass of selected isotopes right from your textbook. Page 881. So notice this usually goes to six decimal points, uh, six decimal places, but some of them we're, we're a little fuzzy on the last decimal because they're unstable. All right? And notice there's U-235, U-238. There's a couple of thoriums. There's poloniums with multiple isotopes. At this point, there's only one lead, but there's actually eight lead isotopes. Not. Anyway, this is just a few of them. You can always Google them if you want. Now, getting back to this, binding energy per nucleon. Let's do a couple of examples. So here... The actual mass of terranium 52, one, sorry, terranium 120, is 119.9045 atomic mass units. I got to double check. Did I pronounce that correctly? Tellarium, sorry. Tellarium, forgive me. I used to teach chemistry. What is the binding energy, binding energy of this isotope? So, how much mass is missing? Now, tellarium. That's 52 protons. And 120 minus 52 is, what is that? 68. 68 neutrons. So we have to figure out the actual mass. Now, last time I did kilograms. Somewhere, it was less than four or less than three. As the atomic mass of a proton and a neutron. Anyway, let's do it here. 52, the atomic mass of a proton is 1 decimal 0, 0, 736 atomic mass units. And that is... Okay, oh, sorry. Don't do it in my head, say it out loud. That's 52.38272 units. Now, 68 neutrons times the mass of a neutron, 1.00865. times 1 decimal 00865. That's 68. 5882 atomic mass units for a total mass 120.97092 units. Now, this is theory. What is actual? And what's the difference? Minus 119.9045 units. So minus 119.9045 is Yubacha. That gives me a difference of one decimal zero six six four two units. 
Now, here's the problem. I did everything in atomic mass units to show you you can do it in units, but my calculation E equals mc squared is in kilograms. Uh, so I should have done everything in kilograms. 6642 units times... Now, one atomic mass unit is 1.660 three five three nine kilograms times one unit which is all right six six zero five oh sorry times ten to the minus oh poopy I can hear you screaming at me now times ten to the minus twenty seven of a kilogram 27. Think it in your head and write it out, Mr. Sutton. Ugh. So the mass, missing mass is 1.770832 times 10 to the minus 27 of a kilogram. Now, E equals mc squared, 1.770832 times 10 to the minus 27 of a kilogram times speed of light, 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second squared. The missing energy E, or the binding energy, I got 996,93, and I'm going to round it off to there. That is, I'm going to call 900, uh, sorry, sorry units right? that is energy in no sorry next sorry my bad skip the step there when I multiply that out I got 1.586 times 10 minus 10 of a joule sorry about that I skip uh, no 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 of a joule is one electron volt, so I'm getting 996, 996,930,000 electron volts. Now, Yes, just double checking. Six nine three zero. Okay, yeah, close enough. So, how many electron volts is that? Six mega electron volts. Actually, nine hundred ninety-seven, isn't it? And capital M. Just double checking because I'm having one of those days. I hate this getting older. You should remember this stuff. Capital M is ten to the six, so that's nine hundred ninety-seven million electron volts. Okay. Now, I'm going to be quiet and let you look at that because there's a fair bit of math in there and I skipped some steps. I apologize. But that's how that goes. So, typical question for you guys what's more stable, 4 2 helium or 16 8 oxygen? Well, that's easy. Go back to the chart here. And there's oxygen, 16 8 oxygen, and 4 2 helium. 4 2 helium. So, oxygen is more stable. Prove it. Yes, that would be one point on a three-point question. So, here we're going, what is the missing the mass? So, what's the missing mass? Now, where the heck are we going to get the mass for 4,2 helium? Ooh, almost like I planned it. 4,2 helium, standard helium 4, 4 decimal 002603. Zero, zero. 
0 0.2603. And oxygen, oxygen 16, 15994 15994 Okay. So here we got to go, oh crap. Figure out the missing atomic mass. And yeah, you're supposed to. Now, I want you to figure out 42 helium two protons, two neutrons, what's the actual mass, or what the theoretical mass is. Actually, I can do that right now. Two protons, two neutrons. Now, as I said earlier, a proton is 1.00, right, so that is two times 1.00, Seven, three, seven. Oh, come on, turn on. Don't do that. So this is two decimal zero one four seven two and two neutrons. One decimal zero zero eight six five. Two decimal zero one seven three zero. So that's two, zero, okay, the one, seven, eight, two, three, four point zero, three, two. Let's subtract the actual four decimal zero zero two six zero three. That means we're missing zero point zero two nine four one seven units is missing. Now, oxygen, do the exact same thing. Now, that's eight protons. So that would be eight decimal zero five eight 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 units. Eight neutrons. Now notice it's exactly four times. Eight decimal zero six nine two zero units. Plus there equals sixteen point one two eight zero eight units. And we said it's actually fifteen point Nine nine four nine one five. So wait, screw that one up. Enter clear minus fifteen point nine nine four nine one five zero point one three three one six five units missing now here we have to convert this to energy e equals mc squared and of course i'm running out of space here so i'm going to skip a couple steps i shouldn't do that but you guys are sharp so this amount of energy e equals mc squared I get 4.396 times 10 to the minus 12 of a joule, which is 27,477,000 and something electron volts. Yes, it goes on to more decimal places than that. I don't care. Now that is 27.5 mega electron volts divided by four nucleons, two neutrons and two protons gives me 6.87 mega electron volts per nucleon. So that's relative stability. 
Now compare that to the oxygen. I did the math and I got 1.989 times 10 to the minus 11 of a joule, which becomes 1, 2, 4, 3, 5, zero, 0, electron volts. Yes, it keeps on going. Now, that's 12.4. Hang on. Oh, sorry. I, my bad. I missed a zero in there. 120. Sorry. Can't even read my own writing anymore. God help us all. Three, five, something, 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 something electron volts. 124.3 mega electron volts divided by the 16 nucleons. Remember? 16 particles in the nucleus. So what's the energy per particle? I got 7.7 .7 mega electron volts. And notice how we default per nucleon. And you can see why I like that calculation, because there's a poop load involved. But it's all quite doable, particularly if I don't skip steps. So that's how that goes. OK. And notice, yes, it's more energy to break the oxygen atom apart to the oxygen nucleus, so that makes it more stable. Okay? Which is, yes. Now, oh, that doesn't look very good. My apologies. That is... Right? There we go. So, oh, God bless. Here's the nucleus here, sorry. I tried fixing the picture and I didn't. Anyway, so there's your nucleus. Comparing atomic and nuclear binding energy. The radius for a hydrogen atom is about 52,900 uh, 52, times 10 to the minus 15 of a meters. And to ionize it, well, more importantly, 13.6 electron volts to ionize it. How much to break apart a um, helium uh, alpha particle? 28 million, uh, 28 million 300,000 electron volts, 28.3 million electron volts. A factor of six times more energy to break it apart. Factor six, that means times a million more. Okay? Yeah, not the best. Anyway. Now, the other thing here, I'm trying to point out the size of the nucleus. No, I did not do a good job with the drawing. I do apologize. This is supposed to be a proton and a neutron and a neutron and a proton. And the radius of the atom is 1.9 times 10 to the minus 15 of a meter. So it's much, much smaller. That is what? A thousand times, forty thousand times smaller than the radius of the hydrogen atom. But what it is is a million times more energy to break it apart. That's the strong nuclear force acting over very short distances. So, trying to say the nuclear binding energy is a whole heck of a lot more. All right. Now, in a can-do reactor, one kilogram of fuel, natural uranium, produces three point four times ten to the five megajoules of heat that's converted to electricity. In an oil and coal power plant fired plant, a kilogram of fuel produces about four megajoules of heat. So notice that in a Kandu reactor, it's three times ten to the five. That is ten hundred thousand, ten thousand. That is about a hundred thousand times more energy per kilogram of fuel. That's one of the reasons we like a, a nuclear reactors literally 10,000 times more energy from the fuel. So yes, there's pollution, but there's a poop load less. Okay. Now, one last thing I want to talk about, pair production. E equals mc squared, matter becomes energy, energy becomes matter. A very high energy photon may create matter. So if you take an electron and a positron, go back to... Um, 
uh, lesson four, where we talked about beta positive and beta negative decay. You get an electron and a positron, they come together, they make a very high photon of energy. That photon of energy can split up into an electron and a positron again. Now, I've made a mistake here because this process must produce two particles whose total charge is zero since charge and momentum must be conserved. But anyway, so a particle, so more important, well, no. So let me rephrase that. Two particles create one monster bit of energy. That monster bit of energy can split up into two particles, not one particle. Because this, um, these two particles will have momentum going in opposite directions. Right? Anyway, but a charge and momentum is conserved here. Notice total charge. This is negative 1, this is plus 1, negative 1 plus 1 is 0. What's the charge on a photon? 0. The electron and the positron will have momentum, and as we talked about in de Broglie EMR 11, photons have momentum, so the momentum here is conserved. Now, I want to stress here a particle and its antiparticle, antimatter, are often produced for example, electron and positron, they have the same mass and other properties, but opposite signs. So if you've ever watched uh, Star Trek where they talk about antimatter in the engine, that in theory works. It is one of the times, one of the few reactions you get, really no byproducts. You have matter creating pure energy. If we could harness this and harness that energy, we would have, well, no, we would have heat pollution, but it would be very low pollution energy. Unfortunately, we have to make antimatter, which is incredibly dangerous and unstable and explosive and really dangerous and expensive to make, but, but we're working on it. Anyway, so let me give you an example here. An 8.5 times 10 to the 20 hertz photon produces an electron and a positron. Determine the total kinetic energy of these particles. Right now, here, this is frequency f. Sorry. Here's the photon. It's going along. It splits up into an electron and a positron. So E equals HF, HC over lambda. Okay, that's the equation you have to remember. Now, I don't care about this because we're doing uh, HF. Now, since this is not, yes, this is SI units, so we have to 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds times the frequency, 8.50 times 10 to the 20 hertz. This energy of the single photon is 5.636 times 10 to the minus 15 of a joule. Now, if you remember, back when we were uh, doing um, energy levels for photons jumping from one energy level to another in the atom, we're getting something like minus 16 of a joule, minus 17. This is like a thousand times more energetic, a thousand times more generous, more, more dangerous, I should say. So if this forms, uh, sorry, total kinetic energy, All right? Now, where was I? Oh yes, I almost forgot, forgive me. Do this once a year, I get old. What's the mass here? Well, energy was used to create mass, so E equals mc squared. Now, what we have are basically two electrons, or proton, sorry, a positron. It's a positive electron. It's the exact same as electron, same mass, and everything else except for the charge. It's the exact opposite, just to confuse you. Now, so that's two times. So the energy is 1.639. Minus 13 of a joule. Now, note here, how much energy did we start with? 
5.636 times 10 to the minus 13. How much energy was used to create the mass, or the mass defect? 1.639 times 10 to the minus 13 joules. What's left over? Ah, that's a very good question. 5.636 times 13 minus 1.639 times minus 13 of a joule. So the energy left over, or the energy kinetic, 3.9957. That rounds off to 4.00 times 10 to the minus 13 of a joule. Now the next question, of course, what would be, what are the speeds? And that goes really fast, but I don't want to get into that because you know, life is too short. So this is mass defect. Take a good look at it. We'll talk about it in class tomorrow, and then you can work on the homework questions. Any questions, shoot me an email. Otherwise, good luck.